Hey YouTube, it's Natero, and I wanted to quickly say none of the music in this video is my own, it is Project Cars. I forgot to think about that when I was building this video. I don't know if I can get in trouble for that, so best to be on the safe side. Someone asked me if I could do this uh, video for their controller, so I'm going to do that real fast. And uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Your thing, I'm going to set it up from scratch, like this is completely scratch right now. So... With the wire wireless controller, I always use default. I'm not going to touch any of this. We're going to go straight over to edit assignments. And everything is default. So all you need to do is go press X on the clutch. X, handbrake, square, uh, leave the shifting as it is. Because I use manual shifting, not automatic. When you go over here, I take for the ignition. Whoop. Well, that's not what I wanted to do. Press X and then L3 and then start engine is R3. Headlights is up. When, when the wipers is down, and then this is my left, and then this is my right. Or, wait, I have that backwards. Left, right, there we go. Now, I usually do this if I have a keyboard, but since I don't, I am not going to get into that very far right now. Um, I don't use any steering assistance. And then when I do this one, it's O, behind, and that's all normal. And then when every time I get a new car, to set up a new car, I always do the buttons. This is kind of various on your own thing. And then I get in there, and then I mess with the car where the seat's at so I can uh, get better angles. Like, example, for the Ford Fusion Cup, mine's a little bit different than the default simply because I feel like when you're in the default, I feel it feels weird. I feel like I'm looking up instead of down. So I went up on the seat, and then I angled it down a little bit, and I moved it forward to some to make it a little bit more realistic, I suppose. And then... The HUD display is my touchpad. I don't use reset car as I feel like that's just a cheap way to... It, like, again, it, if you use it, no problem. But for me, I feel it's cheap. I don't use it because, I, again, I feel it's cheap. Uh, lap info. I do have that. I'm trying to think of what I usually use for that. Oh, wait, no, I don't. Never mind. No, I don't. So we go back over to controller scheme. I turn this to manual and turn automatic clutch to off. Now, an important note about the clutch... When you're using just the X button, some people I've noticed use the right stick as their clutch because they give some more accuracy on the clutch, but I don't really like that that much. I hit X, and you'll notice a little yellow bar doesn't immediately plummet back down. It, like, slowly works its way down. So you have to be careful on how fast you hit the gas because you hit it too early, then you'll have, like, a weird rev. And you notice that, you probably notice that sometimes when I shift. Did I hit anything, did I? Okay. Um, now for my... Configuration, my throttle dead zone is at zero, so is my brake, and then so is my clutch. For the configuration at the top, if you didn't know how to do that, it's L1 and R1. I think, yeah, it says right there. And then the steering sensitivity and my throttle sensitivity. I also jumped this up quite a bit, so it gives you a more accurate representation of what's happening. Clutch, I leave it at that. And this is always nice to have because it gives you more control. I barely even touch my controller, and I notice a difference right away. And, uh, speed sensitivity, force feedback, display. I'm not sure what that does. I've never seen that before. This is the first time I've actually come down here. I don't know what that does. <laughs> yeah, I leave all this the same. I don't touch any of that. So that's for that. And I'm going to go back out, and I'm actually going to show you what I do to get a more rep a better representation of what I use in the uh, car for the camera I think it's movement yes world movement when you have it here your head will stick with the car and you do here like when it goes further to the left like the head will uh, try to think you ever gone into Mojave and then your helmet stays like perfectly straight and the car is rotating around you? That's a bit weird because when you first get it, it's sitting at, I believe at 55 or 50, something like that. And it bugs the crap out of me. So if you go to zero, like the, the, it's how much the world moves, like how even your helmet stays with the car, like it would in real life. And a hundred percent, it's like a stick, but 95, the car would move a little bit. So it adds some movement in there and the G-force effect, I bumped up to a hundred percent. Then the show helmet, yes, yep. I think I left that, and then I turned. I'm not sure about that. I just wanted to note on the world movement. Oh, I have mine way up because I can't take it, as I know that would never happen in real life the way that it does in the game. So that's what I have there. And don't touch these. 
Sorry for the short video and a little bit all over the place as this is a lot of information for me. As I half the stuff I don't even know what it does. I just kind of like mess with it and like, oh okay. Not sure what it's changing, but this looks better than that, so we'll go with that. <laughs> and then for the controls, I try to make all my uh, controls the same as a video game I used to play, NASCAR the game 2011, as that was my first PS3 racing game, and I love the control scheme on that. So all my racing games go with this setup, simply because I just feel it's easier to easier to control. Like, there's some games that have triangle as the only way to look back, and you can't look down, or you can look down, and it, it's all over the place. So I go to every game as long as it's accessible, and I make all the buttons the same. Every video racing game I have is, has this setup. So thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see ya.